So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a real treat. We've got the star of The Expanse. We've got Nadine Nicole. Nadine, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Brian. So happy to be here. And uh, before we get on to the wonderful show of The Expanse, I just wanted to ask, um, you know, how it's been over the last two years and how you've been keeping positive with this horrid coronavirus everywhere. Yeah, it's been um, frustrating, to say the least, and really intense. Um, you know, I think it's gotten easier as we become more adaptable to the circumstances, uh, you know, isolating more, uh, sticking closer to our bubbles and our loved ones. Um, but when I find myself losing hope, which you know, I think is very normal and common during this time, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, I really, you know, I start digging into my inspirations um, and my mindfulness practice is, is there when I need it. Alan Watts is one of my biggest inspirations. I can put on, you know, any YouTube video of Alan Watts and I just feel, you know, back into my center, uh, back into my gratitude and my all knowingness. Um, and I think that is really helpful. And then whatever practices we have with uh, yoga or really making time to find Great memories in those moments, um, which time, but just doing the best, doing the best I can, taking it, you know, knowing that these things come in waves and, and so. Yeah, I mean, again, it's staying positive and finding a way to to get through it mentally I think and um, I'm sure that you know with the expanse we can all escape uh, the world for a little bit and uh, experience some amazing stories so first of all congratulations on si season six um, Thank you. so excited um, I mean we're on season well episode four now when sadly we've only got two episodes left uh, and I had Wes Chatham on the show um, at the end of season five. And yeah. he was a character. He really was. He's such an <laughs> awesome guy guy to have on. And now I've got you. So I've like completed the pair, which is great. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, The Expanse is based on a set of books. Sadly, I haven't read them. Uh, which I will do now uh, because uh, I'd love to see how they compare. I mean, yeah. do you know how they compare with the books to the actual show? For season five, people love the Amos Peaches storyline. That's when they, you know, break out of the UNN penitentiary and go on their big earth, you know, um, apocalyptic journey. And um, everyone in that you get to see their backstories, which is a nice slice of reality that takes you out from all of the action and the huge socio-political world and wars that are going on. Um, so you get to, you know, you get to really go, like dive into the character development, mm -hmm. um, which is really fun. So uh, I think, you know, what's coming up with books seven, eight, nine, um, We'll see if anything else plays out after season six. I'm really crossing my fingers. We'll uh, that see. Was, that was the one thing I was going to say, that, that in your personal opinion, because I'm sure you can't say anything, do you think this is the last we're going to see of the Rossi and the expansion? I cast? hope not. It very well could be, and it very well could not be. That is like really all that I know at this point. Uh, the big man upstairs is looking out after us, and you know, you just trust. Um, but there's definitely more story to tell. Yeah, and the fans saved the show um, last That's time fun. from Sci Fi to Amazon. So I'm sure after the end of season six, I'm sure we'll get a lot of support. Uh, rallied around for the show so let's rewind a bit so before you were on the show um how was the character of clarissa who you play presented to you before you auditioned uh well when i got the breakdown for the project and the character there was really nothing that came along with it i got the scene of clarissa um when she's in the jail cell and Anna comes up to her and basically tells her, no, you don't get the easy way out. Um, or was it that one or there was another jail cell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The priest. That was the scene. And 
they, you know, the breakdown and the description was extremely limited. So I had zero backstory of why she was in there, you know, who this person was, what they were talking about. So you, yeah. you had to get really creative and make it up from the get go. And I had so little to go off of from this breakdown that I was just like, screw it. Like, just put it on tape and sent the first one in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So that's, you know, my biggest guess. Um, and, you know, bless the heavens, got it. <laughs> and, what, and what was the audition like? I mean, can you remember the, the, the audition? I presume it went well because you've got the role. Uh, I mean, what kind of audition was it? Um, so it was on tape at home. I, my friend recorded it and he came over and Julian Graham, who helped me with so many different auditions in Los Angeles. And we, we were, we both just kind of broke it down together. We were like, what is going on? And we couldn't really figure out much content or backstory or concept. So we just did what felt right. And, you know, I think we did four takes and it was in the jail cell with the priest. And, um, at that point, I just remember, you know, little like to no makeup like very just in a dark place psychologically you know and emotionally and um just doing a really subdued natural read and sending that in just crossing my fingers being like i hope that's what they're looking for and um <laughs> so yeah i think I, I do connect with the the character i love clarissa so much like getting to know her after these four seasons um well seasons three and five and six mostly uh has been such a, a fun wonderful journey and i really do connect to her and I, I feel like it was you know the right project the right role comes into your your life at the right time so yeah. i mean the role of clarissa throughout the seasons have changed so much and uh you know kudos to you it's it's amazing to see someone that we didn't like or, or at the beginning and now we really want the best for her we really do i mean how do you prepare for a role like clarissa I, I mean what sort of research did you do and and how much of the character is you and how much is is of the actual character from the books yeah well once i got the role i went back and watched the show and then read the books and you know coming in i didn't know that it was going to go past season three it was just for that small arc in season three where she goes on to the ship to try and you know betray holden and basically shame him so that whole thing i basically had as an actress to prepare myself of being not liked when you go in and you are a type of villain then you just have to you have to know that there's you're going in for that purpose, that that is the intention of your role. Um, but there's there's always justifications for why those humans are behaving in that way. And you really have to empathize with it in an authentic manner um, for it to become believable and for you to be a likable villain or have some sort of chance at a redemption arc, um, which I which I saw was was a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but before years and years and years ago, the, one of the beginning roles of my career was a soap opera called Young and Restless. And I came in and was separating some of the two main lovers into a love triangle and the audience hated it. Like I would literally get <laughs> remarks on Twitter like, back off. When awesome. like, what are you doing? It's like, no, I'm not, I'm not really that person. Um, so it you know it it is really just nice as an actor to to be able to have such a an incredibly written redemption arc and then be able to nurture that authentically throughout the process and come out the other end and have people empathize with the character that it you, that really needed a second chance that people didn't know if if they deserved it because so many as so many of us hold on to secrets or have our weaknesses or dark sides or the things that we've done in our past that we regret and to know that you can try to become a better person is is such a is, is such a worthy story to tell and for people mm. to have it reflected on them like we need we need that story you know and one of the most beautiful things i've got to say is the relationship with your character and amos um because 
Clarissa has definitely changed a Amos. He's 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 a bit I don't know nicer. I mean, how would you describe your connection uh, with Clarissa and Amos in your own words? Oh, I think it's the cutest two peas in a pod relationship. You have these kind of homicidal murderers <laughs> that are really trustworthy <laughs> and loyal to each other and just trying to figure it out. You know, it's like a dumb and dumber, but with guns and knives. Um, I, I think that they really needed each other in season five. You know, uh, Clarissa definitely needed Amos. And the fact that she had just misplaced her anger and, and, mm -hmm. Amos seeing that, that she um, needed a mentor, she needed a guide, she needed one person in this world to see her and to believe in her and give her a chance. Um, and that gave him a boost of morale, as you're saying, like he then goes on his own journey to kind of ask questions and stand up for himself and form his own opinions and start thinking about what's right and wrong to him and why. Um, so I think they, they really support each other's uh, evolution. Mm. I mean, what's been the most challenging part of playing Clarissa and what's been the most rewarding? Um, I think challenging. Uh, there was a lot of different challenges. Um, I think, you know, coming in right off the bat and having to kill Ren and smush his head into the locker, uh, you know, those kind of scenes and were, I was really nervous. Um, and I'm, the first director I ever worked with, uh, Ken, he really nurtured me at that time and like took my hand and walked me through it and helped me build Clarissa those first couple weeks. So I was like, oh, no, how, I, how do you do this? Like <laughs> picking him up and smashing him into the locker and smushing his head in with kicking it in with your leg. That was all, I didn't know if I was capable of being a murderer uh, and being believable and being uh, authentic. I was like, can I do this? I don't know. Let's see. Um, so I think that that was challenging to walk into, but then, um, being able to get through that and then take the character on a journey through, you know, all of these other different kinds of um, arcs is what was most rewarding of taking her from, you know, she is this kind of very timid character, but also very, uh, you know, fierce. And so being able to go through that whole journey with her and come out the other end and be like, oh my gosh, I, I can do that. I can go into a situation of the unknown and being uncertain and come out the other end feeling good, like I did my best, like I am mm -hmm. um, working as hard as I can to master and develop this character. And um, if you work hard enough and, you know, that you can do it. So that was the most rewarding experience for me because it gives me confidence moving forward when I get other roles and I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. I'll think back and remember this four year journey and think, okay, like you got this. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my favorite um, Clarissa moment so far is actually in season six. It's when she gets acceptance from Holden on the Rossi yeah. and she sat mm -hmm. on the stairs and, and and that for me i just thought that's really nice that's like a massive circle you know from wanting to kill him to to now actually being accepted as one of the crew which you think's awesome i mean what's your favorite moment on screen the one that you'll always remember or is it yet to come I mean, there's so many from The Expanse, and we had some great scenes with Holden in season six. Um, season five was also so fun working with Wes. Uh, I think, I mean, there's so many, but I guess from season five, one of my favorites is when I when Clarissa recites the monster poem. That uh, setting, that location in the woods, in the cabin, and having the crew there in the middle of the night, in the freezing winter, in this snowy blizzard, and then, you know, going through that whole, like, cheetah roaring, tearing up that guy, and going in onto the couch, and him waking up, and them having this deep conversation, and her spilling her guts about her time in, with a psychologist in the penitentiary. So I really loved that moment, um, that scene. 
-hmm. And then this season with Holden in, in episode four, when they connect and she is now kind of advising him, you know, don't ever feel bad for killing someone. And she's the only character on the Rossi crew to not be mad at him for making that choice and offering him some uh, support as a friend, which is a huge twist from, as you say, when she was trying to defy him, mm -hmm. betray him. I mean, the, 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 the work that they, they have done on The Expanse is incredible, from the sets to the costumes. Uh, it's just really mind-blowing. I mean, how is it at, at actually shooting on the sets and working? Because obviously in season five, we see you in Baltimore, as they say, and um, you know we see you on, on the ship. I mean, are the sets as magical in person yeah. than on screen? Yes. yes, and that is how it all happens. That's the why um, we're getting what we get is because, I mean, costumes lindsay she cares so much about her job if you are ever cold you know she's right there she's just so passionate it, like everyone in wardrobe everyone in grips and lighting doing the their best to make it look beautiful in the that, that blue cinema photography and, and putting the lighting into the sets um from just like the just the energy from the top down, Narain Shankar is like it, he's just our god, you know. And having um, Shalray Avsarala, our goddess on set, like there's so much good energy and everyone wanting to to do their best and everyone really respecting and caring about the project. It's so inspiring to be around because you just you want to to bring your best work and you want to do it for everyone else because everyone's trying to do their hundred percent. It's, it's pretty unreal. Um, I mean, the camera department, like every, everyone, I just couldn't speak highly enough of how much hard work, blood, sweat, and tears they put into it because they know the audience gets so much out of it and loves it and appreciates it, especially the fine tuning of, of the science, the physics, mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, there was one, one, one scene with Dominique where she's, she's on that ship and she's trying to go out, and each each time she goes out the airlock, she marks the door, and for a while I didn't realize what it meant, but what she was marking was the amount of air, and that in that airlock every time she goes in, and that's the sort of detail they put into the show, which is incredible, and you've even got NASA tweeting. Um, a bit of belter, which I think is fantastic. I think it's yeah. marvelous. I really um, do. Yeah, friend, we're going to be busy in belter. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, no, Naomi is scratching. We, I remember being um, on set during that time and everyone working really hard to figure out how to nail that because it was really hard in the books. It's described in depth and they only had so much room to show it on the TV show and how do you get that across? Um, because it is extremely scientific and a lot of people aren't gonna get it just off of the bat. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, they go down to the nitty gritty details all of the time and that's why the writers are so incredible. And another great thing about the show is the fans and I, the fans are passionate. Um, I mean, have you got any funny stories of any fan interaction? You know, because I can imagine them asking quite technical questions. I mean, are they quite quite nice with you, or are they a bit funny? <laughs> I mean, I've only had people be really kind, being like, "Wait, are you peaches?" <laughs> um, <laughs> no, really difficult technical questions or anything um i don't know I, I the fans are the best uh i've had some interactions like in the yoga locker room or at the post office or i was on a date at a bar and someone walks up and it's like oh my god peaches can i get a picture for my son he's so obsessed with the show and i don't know people are just really kind i think that the kind of people that follow the expanse are you know really intelligent and and brainy mm -hmm. and they get the the high concept um, of the entire world, and they're thinkers, you know, and feelers. So, mm -hmm. I, and another question is: Have you kept any keepsakes from the show? I'm sure you've been asked plenty of times, but um, surely you've kept a, f a few things. Hmm. I have a little uh, set over here that they send. 
It's not so much Cuban. Oh, nice. But it's like the Rocinante. Yeah. For my whiskey, which I don't have in there yet. <laughs> I know, I know. It was full it's this morning. <laughs> on the bottom it says, yeah, I'm yeah. saying cheers and belter. So that's like a really cool little gift that's sitting on my bar over here. And what is the one thing that you're going to miss about the show? About, you know, is it working with the people? Is it getting up each morning um, and getting ready for shooting? That's real early. <laughs> uh, though I do love being on set. There will be more in the future. Um, I, but for specifically for The Expanse, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the sci-fi world. I'm going to miss the NASA consultants, the events at the Space Center, um, being introduced to, you know, Space for Humanity all, and all of these different big thinkers in this world, like being able to um, meet astronauts and ask them questions or, you know, they have Yuri's Night where they all come together. They, you know, Amazon uh, picked up the show when they were at some like really big science convention. So I think just the the melding of those worlds is really cool mm. for entertainment and science and in general. So I think being introduced to those kinds of people in the sci-fi world, in science, in space has uh, just been a really great opportunity. Mm. So, I mean, do you think yeah. the show as, as, as a whole has got a message behind it? Because for me, it's a message of humanity. It's about, you know, looking after Earth and, 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 you know, not, you know, being in that position. I mean, do you read another message in, in into the show? The, the humanity is really big, you know, regardless of the socio-political wars and, and uh, battles going on, they always take the time to have their moments with their character development and show um, the intentions behind both sides. Mm. So, uh, you know, there's hope. There's a message of hope of of working together, of being able to, you know, carry each other and respect each other and let all voices be included, um, which we're always trying to get at in our evolution of humanity. We're always trying to see how do we get there, um, you know, with survival. And, and so I guess there's the hope. That is the main through line of humanity. But I, there's also there's also the point that sometimes it's really hard to decipher between right and wrong, like black and white. Um, mm. Like you really understand why Marco is doing what he's doing for the belt. He is a face of um, a long situation of, of people that have been left behind. And so, you know, and then Drummer and what she goes through and um, the Rossi is not always on the right side of history all the time, you know, and each individual is in on their own journey of their own morale and right and wrong and hope for themselves within the systems. So I think, and then Ava Sarala, that's also a very complicated, complex, layered uh, storyline. And so it's, it's never really black and white of what is right and what is wrong. And I think that that's really cool how that they really make, help you understand that with um, all the different storylines and characters. Mm. Mm. I mean, I can't wait for the next two episodes. I mean, is there anything that you can give away that, you know, you know, that's going to happen? Or is it a case of literally you're under lock and key? I can't give anything away. No spoilers. Oh, those darn NDAs. <laughs> but, but do you know what? I've got to say, I would love to see the crew of the Rossi literally finish and then go on holiday. I'd love to see Stephen Strait that plays Holden a on beach. a beach a with Bahama. a Mai Tai. Literally, <laughs> because he obviously drinks too much coffee and he's... Honestly, he's so laser focused. He needs a, a vacation. So, so fingers I crossed. Think that's Naomi what happens. in the books go do that for a while. They're like, oh, maybe we should just go have a family and chill <laughs> and like not be in war all the time. Um, <laughs> I would crossed. love to see that too. <laughs> and I wanted, while I've got you, I wanted to ask uh, about True Connection, about mm -hmm. your nonprofit, which sounds mm -hmm. amazing. If if you can let the viewers and the list listeners know a bit about this uh, organization that you have? 
Um, so True Connection specializes in social emotional learning. Um, it was a project I started just as a fun passion um, when I was living in Los Angeles in 2006, uh, teaching uh, theater to de developmentally disabled adults. And I, I fell so in love with social work um, and, you know, volunteering in the community that I was like, oh, I want to do this and travel because I just love traveling and culture. And, and so um, took that to Africa and built a curriculum with one of my best girlfriends here in Detroit who's a social worker, and we brought uh, mindfulness, trauma awareness, and healing arts, um, creative expression to this orphanage in Sierra Leone. That was in 2009, 2011. And the curriculum was so beautiful and taken so well and really affected the rest of their lives. And so we took that and we developed it even further to include social emotional learning um, and then did that with... Um, kids in after school programs throughout Los Angeles, uh, Compton, uh, kids transitioning out of homelessness. Um, and that was just a really beautiful experience. And then I, I really wanted to be able to um, scale that. And so we put um, our social emotional learning curriculum online for professional development for teachers and educators and parents to be able to take this curriculum and teach it to their kids if they're doing homeschooling or the zoom things or in class um, or we used it with teaching the los angeles um, youth services officers so that they can train their cadets uh, so it's um you can you can keep the love going. You can hand it on, pass yeah. it on, pass it on to your family or community. These kinds of tools uh, for building empathy and for knowing how connected we all are and being able to go on that healing journey um, that Clarissa needed to go on. <laughs> <laughs> and that is awesome. I wish more people would take time out out of their schedules to actually do good for others. I think we all should you know take take a leaf out of your book. Um, also, I wanted to ask, uh, being in the pub public eye, do you feel that you've got a level of responsibility within social media to use that as a platform to, to help organisations? And do you feel that there are people in the public eye that may not use it as well as they should? You know, I, I honestly teeter back and forth on this. Um, my instinct, the, the younger Nadine, is so passionate and, and and has so much to say about humanity. And then there's these points where you're kind of like, you know, who is listening? How much can you control and affect the future? And where is your energy and time best spent? And I think everyone has different callings and purposes um, and gifts to share and that they can do that in different ways. Um, I love seeing people use their social media platforms for positive change in the community um, or being able to share, you know, knowledge and wisdom um, that can help affect people's lives. Um, but I also know that it is, it's, you know, some people don't even want to be on social media. Sometimes it's, it's not healthy mentally um, and you need a break or you need your space or you need to focus on it in a different way. Maybe it's hands-on in the community. It's not exactly on social media. Maybe you're working with people um, a once a week in person, volunteering your time. I think there's different ways to go about it as long as you are giving back and being generous in some way. Um, and yeah, just trying to trying to leave little gifts here. You know, we're not going to be here that long. Leave a few gems if we can. And uh... yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, to be honest, we only have one life, and it's our job in life to create memories and to be remembered and be remembered for the good things, not the bad things. So it's the way I okay. it's the way I look <laughs> at life. Uh, as a parent, I'm a memory maker for my kids, yeah. and um, yeah, it's the only way 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 to be. But uh, Nadine, you've been a great guest. Um, I'm loving the show. Um, the last thing I want to ask is, how on earth do you keep all the secrets? Because you must go into those interviews um, with questions being thrown at you right, left and centre. How do you keep everything under, you know, wrap? Or have you accidentally spilled? I've accidentally spilled on interviews, especially at the beginning when I was just kind of learning how to do them. 
um, you accidentally say too much and then they can't use it in the video or you have to be edited out or you have to like <laughs> stop and restart. So that's when I learned, I was like, okay, just don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so me, me, me saying, oh my goodness, I can't believe that's going to happen. It's all right. I'll edit that out. People think... Yeah, I won't say that because uh, then people think that you've said something. But Nadine, you've been great. <laughs> Clarissa, fantastic. Uh, let's hope Amos and Clarissa get married and have loads of children and, and, and live <laughs> on a beach some, somewhere in Bali. That would be great. But <laughs> look, yeah, Bali, some, somewhere random. But thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, look after yourself. Uh, keep safe. And I can't wait for the last two episodes to drop. I cannot wait to see what's in store for the Rossi and Clarissa. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your storytelling, you know, sharing all of these memories as well. It's wonderful getting to know you a little bit and chatting with you.